Welcome to another edition of Cheese Steaks with. I am here with somebody fresh off the plane from South Dakota, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So, did you even decide on a, a channel name for your new channel? The new channel? I'm pretty sure I'm going to set with Zakoda. Zakoda. I'm pretty sure that's what that's down. So. All right. So, <laughs> Zach here is starting a new YouTube channel. He is a YouTube legend, an unknown <laughs> YouTube legend because he does not have a channel uh, with his own name on it and um, a channel... I don't think you have a channel with you in it necessarily. Are you in Nightmare Fueled Entertainment at all? You have the a one little, video, yeah, a, a little bit, a, little, a bit more. Um, tap out. But he has a channel with over half a million subscribers that he's the voice of that he organizes. And I got an email one day. Um, I actually might start this over. Is that all right? Yeah, you gotta go right, for yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. I want to. I want to get my introduction yeah, yeah. earlier. All right. All right. Welcome to another edition of Cheese Steaks with. I am here with my friend Zach, fresh off the plane from South Dakota. Why he's here, I'll get to in a second. But first, I want to explain how I met Zach. So, uh, I get an email from somebody which uh, reaching out about the channel, saying they're a fan of the channel, like watching, which isn't atypical. It happens every now and again, and and I try my very best to respond to every email I get because um, I really appreciate it. And and in this email, again, that's not atypical, is the person, Zach, was saying, I do YouTube too. And a lot of times people say that, and most of the time they're very small channels or people starting out, and I'm happy to respond and maybe give advice or insight, check out their channel, give a, give a follow, give a like, whatever it is. Any way I can support, that's great, right? Well, this very unassuming email with no sort of, uh, you know, flair to the to the Gmail tab. It just had the Z for his uh, name, Zach. And, uh, you know, I, I typed in his name on YouTube and nothing came up. And uh, honestly, I don't even know. I think I asked you, um, like, what, like, what's the name of your YouTube channel? I'll check it out. And you said, tap out corner. I look it up. And here, this guy had over <laughs> half a million followers, absolutely crushes it on YouTube. As videos like, you know, a million, a million views is like a light day for him. And so I'm like, oh, wow. Like, this is, the, this is the, this is the most unassuming email ever. Like, kind of blew my mind. And so, um, what we started doing was once a week we would have, uh, calls where we talk about YouTube. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm the lucky one here picking your brain <laughs> most of the time, but I like to think that I provide moral support, uh, in, in some instances. Um, but what's really cool about Zach and something I'm excited to talk about and share is that not only is Tap Out Corner just one of many YouTube channels he has, uh, it's, it's honestly been kind of inspiring to kind of like, you know, you, you have an idea and you just kind of go with it, which I think is super cool. Um, but he's also starting a brand new channel, yep. which have you decided on a name for it yet? Yeah, I think we've been going through it. He's been there for the whole process, but I think what we're going with is Zakoda. Zakoda. Yes. All right. Because he he wanted a. Uh, it's more of a uh, you know not to not to put you in a box, yeah. but it's more of a uh, Mr. Beast style yeah. channel where it's like giveaways and like you know challenges and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and so originally you were thinking Mr. Bison. Yes. Very proud of his South Dakota heritage. Yeah. So you know got the bison. Uh, I remember exactly Zach was uh, in the runnings, <laughs> but I said that sounded a little too Disney yeah. for me. So I like Zakoda. That's cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. got Zach in it. You know, on the on the uh, the visual, but yeah. you know, Zakoda sounds cool. Yeah. Take Dakota, place the D at the Z. That's Zakoda. There, there it is. Go, there so. it is. Um, so that's cool, man. So one of his video. Now you haven't you haven't released any videos at all yet, right? Not this moment. Right. Working on getting just kind of getting content put together, so we have you know stuff to right. watch with. So, so it's not just you know one video and then struggling to get the next one out. I want to have a nice at least five videos is kind of the goal. Five videos gotcha. to get the the channel started. So, right now in the whole filming process. So at this very moment, it doesn't exist, but hopefully that changes. Right, right. <laughs> and who knows? By the time this comes out, uh, this will be later in my second season. So maybe by yeah, the time so. it comes out, the video be, or videos will be available. And they will be in the link yeah. in the description, top <laughs> comment, I'll, I'll have it there. Um, but one of the videos you are filming is you challenged yourself to say yes 
for an entire week. You're not allowed to say no. Now, Correct. there are some parameters. Yep. You can't like, you know, I can't tell you to go punch a guy and you can't say anything. You know, if I say, is the sky purple? You don't have to say yes. Like yeah. you're factual. So yeah. everything yeah. he says in this podcast will be the truth. Yeah. Um, but knowing that he was saying this say yes video and knowing that I needed a guest for the podcast, I gave Zach a call and I said, hey, Zach, will you come to Philadelphia and have a cheesesteak with me? And he had to say yes. So I called him on. Uh, what's today? Thursday. I think yeah. I called you Tuesday, Tuesday right? Tuesday, yeah, yeah. I called him two days ago. So this is an unplanned, impromptu trip. I called two days ago, and you're here. So uh, how's the experience been so far? It's been really awesome. Yeah, we were. Uh, Eddie was giving me the full tour of Philadelphia. He's an awesome travel guide or a uh, tour guide, and so showing me City Hall and everything. It's just uh, always amazing. It's just nothing quite like this in uh, South Dakota and Sioux Falls. It's you know just a fraction of what's here in Philadelphia. So oh, it was awesome to see. It's been, it's been really fun. It's awesome too. Uh, Eddie was kind of about you earlier, but how we, you know, every week uh, we get together, have a, have a chat. And so, and uh, it's just been awesome for me because, you know, being in South Dakota, one of the least populated states and what, been in a pretty small city, about like 200,000 people, there's not really anyone to do YouTube with, you know, yeah. or not anyone that's like serious about it actually wants, you know, to, to make it happen. So I've always just been for the longest time when I, I when my first video in 2008 and I basically virtually have never had anyone to like talk YouTube with, you know, share ideas, get feedback, you know, and so then Eddie was actually was the first person that was I think earlier this year 2022, I think that's when we started started chatting if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, it's, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I don't think it was last year, but yeah, so that's like the first time I've actually ha been able to talk with someone who's like doing YouTube seriously and uh, you know, has a successful channel as well where you know, we're actually able to talk and bounce ideas and like he, I, I feel like I'm the lucky one getting to work Oh with man, Eddie. I don't know about that, man. Because I'll, I'll share ideas, you know, and then he'd be like, yo, well, what about this? You know, what do you think this would be? I'm like, oh, I, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as, like, sometimes you, know, like, you have like a video that performs really well, you get kind of cocky, you're like, oh yeah, I got this YouTube thing in the bag. Like, I'm basically a master at this point. And then, you know, I'll, I'll chat with Eddie and it's like, oh my gosh, I have so much to learn <laughs> so much i didn't even think about this or i'm just like oh yeah that's not like flushed out enough at all yeah. so well you know I i've always thought it's a lot easier to be critical than creative mm -hmm. so yeah. you know it's easy to look at it and uh no man it it's cool seeing you and you you know we talked about this a lot i think the problem with my channel is you know i i i really respect how much of a business mind and a uh I don't want to say realistic, but like, you know, you have, you approach YouTube in the right way as to what's needed for the platform now in that, like, you have a very good, like, you know how to brand the channel, you stick to your niche, you know the parameters of the channel, you know what works for the channel or what doesn't. So much so, I know that, like, your biggest channel is a wrestling channel, mm -hmm. and on the side, you also have like a wrestling promotion business oh yeah yeah and and you don't oversaturate even combining those two things mm -hmm. because it's like all right youtube wrestling highlights doesn't need to be mixed with you know live wrestling yeah. entertainment and like me on the other hand you know i'm like a i'm an artist going by his heart like you know today i want to do this uber thing tomorrow i want to play video games you know it's like and then you know now i want to make a comment on this now i want to make a skip video about covid you know it's like you know i i like personally i like doing it but like to grow a channel and to grow an audience you know i they feel like youtube and the viewer doesn't know what they're going to get yeah. which as somebody who is a audience member for everything i consume it's like yeah when i turn on this I want to know that I'm getting this. Yeah. When I turn on that, I want to, when I listen to this, I want to know. And it's like, you know, it, it, it reminds me of like, hey, man, I got to, if I want to be able to do this, I need to be able to sacrifice some of the, uh, I don't want to say sacrifice the art, but like yeah. sacrifice the, some of my wants, yeah. and some of my desires and like put it more towards like this branding and you know, yeah. that's a nice way of saying art is dead, yeah. but, but it is, you know, yeah, yeah, art, yeah. art doesn't, uh, you know, art doesn't fare well on, on YouTube, yeah, but, uh, yeah. but Hey, it happens. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so um, I, I just like I, I want to know what your right off the actually no before I say that back to the tour guide part yeah. I I have to say I love the fact that we were driving through West Philly and. It wasn't that bad of a neighborhood. And you were like, so is this one of the worst parts of Philadelphia? <laughs> I'm like, nah, it's pretty middle class, Philly. <laughs> it's like, you see how there's businesses here? That means that there's still, you know, uh, some life here, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I also thought it was funny. You were like, um, and we're just, for those familiar with Philly, we're just on Baltimore Ave. And, you know, there's like not a ton of stores but there's just like storefronts you know on Baltimore Ave and you were like is this like a shopping district is this like a downtown <laughs> area of West Philly he's like no this is just this is just I don't know it's just I don't even know how to describe it this is just where stores are <laughs> uh, well when you're in a city where the downtown's basically just one strip, anything with like a lot of businesses seems like oh man this must be the the shopping the district hub, this yeah. is where it goes down <laughs> yeah I actually remember I was in Sioux Falls yeah. once and uh it, it was cool, man. I remember, um, you know, I think we were there, I think it was like a Wednesday or Thursday night, and I remember being in this, like, downtown area, and I remember specifically there was this, like, one big store with, like, huge floor-to-ceiling windows. I don't know if it was a furniture store or what, um, but I remember thinking, like, man, one, there's so much parking, and two, <laughs> like, everything was closed. It was, like, I don't know, eight or nine o'clock on, like, a Wednesday night or something, mm -hmm. and... I don't know, maybe it was that time of the year, whatever it was, but I was like, and maybe it was the, maybe it was more like 10 or 11, yeah. but it was like totally dead. And I was like, this is downtown and everything's <laughs> closed. Like, what is going on? Like, yeah. that was, that was kind of like a culture shock to me, but. It's funny you mentioned like uh, so much parking because I just had a conversation with someone earlier this week talking about how like, man, they really need to work on the parking situation here. Like, really? Yeah. It's really, when I think about it, it's really only bad when there's like, you know, a lot of stuff going on. So there's like the, you know, theater and stuff and uh, things going on there. So whenever there's a concert or a play or something going on, then yeah. you know, it gets pretty packed. But, you know, I, thinking about it realistically, yeah, there's, you know, it's pretty accessible. Right, <laughs> right. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, I remember driving around, like, there was just like no such thing as traffic. Yeah, no. That, I've, I've noticed that a lot. Like, whenever I travel outside of the Northeast, um, you know, pretty much anything in between, off the coast and, and the South, it's just like rush hour is like, you know, a light, a light, you know, Sunday morning. You yeah. know what I mean? Like around here, it's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's nuts. But yeah. Um, so what's your initial? Imp oh, gotta love the siren. Cause it, come on, we're filling a podcast here. Um, what's your initial impressions of Philly? Really interesting. You know, I love the, especially just this part of the country. There's a lot more history than there is yeah. out, you know, at least history in the, in a different sense, but you know, you, uh, you know like even uh, City Hall is just like, wow, this is City Hall. Like, I honestly, when we were driving through it, like, it's you know, Philadelphia, like the capital seems like the capital building because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think like our City Hall in Sioux Falls is just probably like you'd probably fit at least like 10 or 15 of like <laughs> City Halls there, honestly. No, into the City Hall, it, yeah, in Philly, maybe yeah. not quite that, but yeah. still, like, you know. Yeah. It's it's a fraction of what what you got here yeah, in Philadelphia, yeah. just for the the city hall. Yeah, so. and you haven't had a ton of experience in big cities, right? You've been to Chicago and Toronto. Yep, uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Yeah, probably the ones I really remember. You know, there's yeah. stuff when you're a kid. You drive like, I probably I think I've been to Kansas, but you know it's been so long ago, and I was yeah. probably like nine or something. So yeah. you kind of it just Kansas all seems city like what? Or? Uh, Kansas State. Oh, like, uh, yeah. I yeah. doubt there's, you know, a lot of yeah, buildings like, there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, no, those are the only ones uh, off the top of my head. Chicago, Minneapolis, Toronto, in terms of uh, big metros. I guess I was in Las Vegas a few years ago, so it's another uh, bigger city, but it's almost its own beast with the, the culture and yeah, the yeah, scene yeah. down there. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I want you to explain to my audience just because sure. I personally love hearing this story, too. I've told this story to like three or four people. I find it so interesting how you got into YouTube, specifically uh, wrestling YouTube. Okay. I find that so amazing. Yeah. So let's hear your story. I guess like for YouTube wise, it started 2008. Well, that's when I uploaded my first video. But, you know, probably about a year ago, I had seen you know, I was watching YouTube because I didn't have cable or anything. So this kind of was my cable TV. I'll you know, just be able to watch content, seeing stuff. And it was initially video games that kind of got me interested in YouTube. I saw people showing their video game collections. I was a big uh, fan of games at that time. And I thought, oh, wow, like 
collecting. That seems like really fun. Like that's so so cool. And you know, people are showing their collection. I like seeing that. You know, and sharing like their memories of these games. So I I did that video, and that was like in 2008. I remember my little uh, story about that. Like I think it, I can't, I'm not even sure if like YouTube really has it now, but like there's like a certain age you have to be. Like maybe maybe I'm guessing YouTube probably still has something like in the you know in the fine print about that. But I remember. You know, my dad wouldn't let me make a YouTube channel. He's like, oh, you got to be like 13 or 18. I'm like, oh, you know, come on, you know. So, but then he's like, okay, well, I'll create the channel. Like, it'll be my channel, but you can, you know, make videos oh, on wow. it. So, but, so it's kind of crazy. I was starting from before, like, where I wasn't, uh, I, I couldn't do YouTube because of my age. And now yeah. where it all came from. But, um, but yeah, I started with that in 2008, you know, throwing a uh, video of uh, my video games that I had uh, at that time. And, it was just off PlayStation and, Two or no? It was uh, I remember it was uh, my Nintendo Wii and GameCube collection. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was always a big Nintendo kid, so right. never got super into Xbox or PlayStation, just mm. pure Nintendo. Gotcha. So, but yeah, so I did that and kind of just a few random videos here and there. You know, I didn't upload a a ton. I remember it was very sporadic, uh, and so but then you know slowly but surely I got kind of introduced to like you know stop motion animation with like Lego figures where you take a picture, move the figure, take another picture, you put all those together and it makes, you know, a little movie basically. And so I thought, oh, that's awesome. You know, you can make your own characters, make your own sets, you know, you use Legos. That's you know, super easy to work with. So I kind of, that was kind of my next uh, evolution because that showed show me like, hey, like you can edit your videos. Like once you don't have to just hit record and stop and then upload it. Like you yeah. can you know, cut things and you can like, oh, you can add text, you know, and like. I know. didn't know you made like movies like, or like skits. Like, yeah, what yeah. Were they like no way. I, the first one I think I did was I did a little police chase, like, you know, guy gets his car stolen, a little police car, you know, chases him down, no it crash, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I filmed it on my dresser, I remember, so oh, it was just, so like, cool. little Lego figures walking around, it was terrible. How <laughs> long were they? I think this one was maybe, like, probably a minute or two. Oh, that's pretty, hilarious. Pretty short, but I remember the, one of the fun parts is, like, voicing the characters, you know, like, that was one that we, yeah. me and you know, everyone else who helped out was, like, got into so yeah but yeah so i kind of did that for a little bit and you know experiment with some different types of stop motion you know because i just i like that idea of being able to kind of tell your own stories you didn't need to worry about actors you just you know only besides voices but right, you know right. at the same time you you know, get, you know mel blank <laughs> right, right, right. so but uh and then yeah i think it's a little fuzzy but i know i did like some stuff in my high school because i got into like got in i was into to wrestling and kind of was like i don't know like that whole idea of just you know producing content, you know, like the sporty events and like, you know, like, oh, let's do like top 10, you know, plays of the game. Let's do, you know. And you mean wrestling, like high school wrestling? No, uh, not uh, WWE wrestling, actually. Oh, okay. So I can't. Well, from what I understand, you only got into WWE because of video games. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, that's what I find the most interesting part of the story because, you know, I grew up in the 90s. WWE, WWF, I'm mixing up the names, you know, yeah. I know. So I remember there was a thing, but like the wrestling was like the most amazing thing and then to hear like that like that was it like yeah, that was hot yeah. you know like the actual show and then to hear that like video games got you involved yeah. with wrestling i was like man that's so cool um yeah and then to turn that into a whole channel yes based yeah. on that is like i don't know i just find that the most like crazy like i would never have suspected that you know <laughs> yeah yeah I mean? so so in high school you were already in wrestling no actually no oh. uh but you were in the sports top ten videos. I was kind of I was I did a little bit of the sports thing. It was never really my cup of tea. But then I got like was really into video production. I liked you know the idea of like filming events and like you know let's add in cool graphics you know and scores and just like you know let's we have our own little like kind of I don't know community our own little organization here at this high school you know and like we have our different sports like let's you know do you know highlights of these things let's go out there and film because no one was really doing anything like that and so. Right. Kind of was able to wiggle my way in uh, through the high school and kind of start doing some some stuff there. You know, super small scale. It was, you know, just basically parents, grandparents that got into that sort of thing. But yeah. that kind of it didn't really affect my YouTube career a whole lot. But it did get me, you know, just more experience with, you know, editing, getting, you know, filming. Right. And so right. all this, you know, a YouTube video. And then kind of around that time, I'd been a fan of wrestling, but I'd never done, like, anything wrestling related on YouTube. I was always just, you know, watching, learning, you know, observing, and then... Uh, after high school, though, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I can't do the high school stuff anymore because I'm I'm graduated. Yeah. So, I uh, but so I remember that summer, I, you know, I was kind of getting you know into college, getting into work, but I wanted to keep doing YouTube, and so that's what I thought. Well, why don't I try a you know wrestling channel? I've tried you know video games, I've done these Lego things, I've done you know, and there was a ton of other ones that you know started and stopped almost instantly. So I said, well, why don't we try you know a wrestling channel? That could be fun. And so 
I did one video and it was just like, I think it was like 10 minutes. I think I just killed myself making it because I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, this takes so long. Like, you know, all the, I was terrible at recording stuff. I record like, I'd say one sentence that I'd mess up the second. So uh, editing all that out took forever and finding all the clips. And I was just like, I put it up there and it's just like, yeah, this isn't going to work out. But yeah, so let's just, you know, brush it off. And then, uh, so I put it on this channel called Tap Out Corner and then just like, okay, wrestling thing won't work out. But then about like two weeks goes by, I go back and the video has like a few thousand views. I'm like, what's going on yeah. here? You know, like I kept seeing, it, I kept getting like a bit of traction. I was just like, wow, like this is way more than I've ever gotten on anything else that I've done. So, you know, we can come back and yeah. <laughs> we can do this again. So do you remember what your first video was about? Very first video. I think it's still on there. WWE's you know, terrible with uh, copyright claims and stuff, but, uh, it was on a wrestler named Sin Cara. Uh, he was a Mexican, you know, mass luchador wrestler. Uh, and so, and the thing I wanted to do, was, I wanted to do these like, kind of history videos of wrestlers, like how they got into wrestling, their whole journey to getting to WWE. And then once they were in WWE, like what were their feuds, all the various feuds and storylines, yeah. you know, things that happened throughout their career. So you could basically get a quick snapshot of like the whole, a wrestler's whole career. And the thing I found interesting about this uh, mass wrestler Sin Cara was there was a storyline where there was like an imposter, someone else who was like, impersonating him because it was just the mask so you didn't you know you get anything else and then but in real life the thing that i found really interesting was this uh Sin Cara wrestler like wwe actually replaced the real Sin Cara with a second person to play the role but it was still supposed to be the same oh same guy wow. yeah so Did they look alike pretty similar but i think yeah. if you saw them side by side you could tell. yeah you could tell and like so i just thought that was kind of interesting that they is had, interesting they had the storyline of you know the imposter coming in and that was all supposed to be you know that was planned part of the show and then a few years later, they replaced the guy who was playing this character with a new guy, but that wasn't, you know, part of the story. That was just, you know, it was supposed to be the same exact same right, the right. whole time. So, oh, that's wild. Yeah, so I thought, oh, that's, you know, kind of cool to share, you know, yeah. and so and so I did that, and I think, uh, you know, mask wrestlers are always just, you know, very intriguing, you know, and whatnot, and I think Sin Cara just kind of got, like, it was just, you know, very good topic to start with. Yeah. You know, he has a very good presence online. A lot of people get into that sort of character, so I think that's one of the reasons why that first video blew up uh, so much is just because the the choice I picked there yeah. and so made some good information because I still saw comments like oh I had no idea that you know that that the you know current Sin Cara isn't the same one as the original you know yeah. the WWE switched them out so but that was yeah essentially that video blowing up was kind of what really got my YouTube career in the sense of it becoming a job uh, that's where it started was that yeah. first video blowing up because if I if it hadn't if it just sat, sat there I I don't know what would have happened. I probably wouldn't be doing wrestling videos anymore, yeah. I, th I don't think. At what point did you know that you could do this full time? Like, how many videos until your channel, like, started making you money? You yeah. started getting traction that was, like, consistent? Probably about four years after, because it was, like, mid-2015, and then mid-2019 is kind of when I transitioned to becoming more of a job, so... Gotcha. Oh, wow, yeah. so it took four years for it to... Yeah, really. Yeah, man, that's I, I love that. I just yeah. love like, you know, I feel like true overnight success is like so detrimental in the mm -hmm. long run, yeah. you know, and like if you had that first video go to, I don't know, 500,000 yeah. and you make, you know, 600 bucks from it or whatever it is. And you're like, oh, my God, every video I'm going to make this. Yeah, and yeah. then like, you know, the next one doesn't do that. It's going to, you know. Yeah, so that's so yeah. cool to like, you know, one of my favorite ideas is it took me 10 years to be an overnight success. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's, I, I really believe that like sometimes it's better for it to take yeah. four years. And that's like, yeah. I don't know, it's encouraging to hear, you know, because like I've, you know, told you like my channel's kind of in a, in, you know, not the best place yeah. right now, but I'm like, Hey, this is part of the ebb and flow. And like, if I look at the growth, you know, over the past four years, if I if I if I zoom out over the past four years, I'm doing great. It's yeah. just that I'm looking at the past four months, you know, what yeah, I mean? and like yeah. and, you know, it's encouraging to hear like, I don't know that it takes everyone. You yeah, know, it's like you know, it's just the way life goes. Yeah, exactly. Like even today, like there's months and we, you know, we talked about this, but there's months where like, oh, man, you know, super selling month, you know, great. You know, everything's doing great next month. Oh, well, you know, it wasn't as good as, you know as where I wanted, it wasn't as good as last month, you know, yeah. it wasn't my best, you know, this year, and so, but, you know, I try to, you know, zoom back and, like, look like, okay, you know, a year ago, two years ago, I mean, if you had these numbers, you would have been, like, ecstatic, you exactly, know, and, like, yeah. I'm like, as long as I'm keeping my bills paid, as long as it's over my head, I'm, I'm good, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, um, 
something I think that scares me is, you know, sometimes I get comments like, oh man, I love this channel. This, this reminds me of YouTube in 2014 when it was like, you know, because my channel is very like, I don't have all the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. I don't have this like, you know, I still do everything myself, which I probably shouldn't. I should probably get an editor and, you know, I should definitely, I definitely need better thumbnails. But like, you know, as far as my videos, it's like very just real, like, you know, this is not raw footage, but like, hey, like this is what happened, you know? And people are always oh, like YouTube before it became all commercialized yeah. and corporatized and all that, which on one hand, it's cool to hear. Yeah. But then on the other hand, I'm like, well, you know, does this mean my time is like, is this, is this yeah. up? You know, like maybe, maybe I need to switch it up. You know, maybe this just doesn't work anymore. You know? So like, I know that your Zakoda channel is going to be similar to like a Mr. Yeah. Beast or, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of channels yeah. like him. Uh, but like, do you fear that like, what's your thoughts on the fact that like maybe did you miss that wave is it too late you know or do you think youtube's gonna keep going in that direction um i don't know what he's or is yeah. it just like hey man this is something i'm passionate about something that i really yeah. respect <laughs> about this project and i don't want to reveal too much no spoiler alert, but these video ideas that he has are very i mean he flew out to philadelphia because i asked him a question and he said yes you know like I don't know if, if you've ever looked in the flights from Sioux Falls to Philly. They're not cheap. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like these other videos I have, he's like, you know, I'll let you share as much as you want to share. But there's they're not low budget films. Let me put it like that. <laughs> and so, like, I know that you're committed to this. Um, is that commitment more of like this is where you think YouTube's going? Or is it like, hey, this is something I want to do? Be and I ask yeah. it because... That's something that I always go back on with my channel when it's not doing good. I'm like, hey, this is this is something that I like doing, you know? Yeah. And this is, like, something I'm proud of. Um, and I think, you know, when I get stressed, it's when, it's when I'm doing something that I'm not necessarily proud of. I'm doing it for the algorithm, so yeah. to speak. And then it doesn't perform bad. Yeah. Or it doesn't perform good, I should yeah. say. I'm I'm fine selling my soul if it performs <laughs> yes. well. You know, same, by all means, same. man. I'll sell my soul if it doesn't work. But man, if I sell my soul and it doesn't do well, yeah. like, God, what am I doing? That's like when I get really down yes. on myself, you know? So like, um, I don't know. So that's yeah. kind of what what are your thoughts on like basically your intention with your channel and the future of YouTube and how they play together? Yeah. I guess like main thing with uh kind of but my concern is just more like, yeah, it's kind of what you were talking about a little bit, but just the, yeah, not, the video's not performing well, because now I'm kind of, now that I'm starting to do this content, I'm trying to look for other people, you know, one, just to connect with other people that are kind of doing these sort of, uh, you know, Mr. Beast, for lack of a better term, type videos, or just videos that are similar to what I want to produce, you know, just to, one, see what's out there, two, you know, try to meet people, and like, I'll see some videos like, oh, man, I think that was, you know, that seemed pretty solid, like that thumbnail, you know, title, and then, but the views are kind of like, oh, like, I would have, if, I, if it was my video, I would have been, you know, kind of disappointed with the, the view count. Yeah. I was like, oh, shoot, like, am I going to put these videos out here? And then, like, you know, <laughs> they're sitting, like, you know, at, you know, maybe 10, you know, 15 views or just, you know, nothing that uh, monumental. And so that's yeah. that's kind of where my biggest fear is. And it's the, and I think about it more and more because, like, there is so many people kind of emulating the Mr. Beast style. There have been yeah. for a little while now. So that's where I'm like, you know, I hope that, you know, I'm somehow able to get in there. And part of me does want to, you know, just in general, brand, you know, make my own identity rather than be like the new Mr. Beast, you right. know, I want to be the first Zakoda, you know, right, right, right. and so, but I figure just start making videos, these, this is a whole new process, you know, we've talked about it, but like, it's a lot more interacting with people and, you know, a lot more, uh, but compared to what I was doing with, you know, Tap Out Corner, where it's basically just research right, you're done, you know, yeah. here it's a lot of, okay, I need someone to help me film this video. I need someone to help with, you know, this aspect of it. I need to interact with, you know, random people in order to get this, you know, filmed. And so just, it's a completely different beast. So I'm just, you know, a uh, part of the pun. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. But uh, I just said, you know, well, <laughs> well done. Yeah. I wanted to pick that up. That'd I don't totally, totally yeah. understand. <laughs> but, uh, but speaking of Mr. Beast, like that, I'm like, yeah. And we were, you know, Mr. the channel, the name was originally Mr. Bison was what we were going off of. And I didn't want that, you know, it's, too close to Mr. Beast and like both the videos themselves, they are going to be very Mr. Beast heavy. Like, yeah. I know that going in, but right now I'm just like, just get circling used to making this type of content. Then 
once we're past that, you know, stage of, okay, I can, you know, just go up to someone. I have, you know, people who can help me film and have all the pieces in place. Now let's start figuring out what's going to make Zakota videos different than Mr. Beast videos, yeah. you know, but I'm yeah, just like, yeah. just, start, just get into it right now. You know, it's a, the whole, what sets you apart is that's a huge question in of itself. And there's so many questions that need to be answered right now. Of just like the practicality of who's going to film this and right. how can I, you know, get uh, five mystery boxes to the delivery driver in order for him to pick one without them, you know, seeing it, <laughs> you yeah, know, right, so, yeah, yeah, right. so there's just, so that's kind of, kind of where I'm at right now. It's just, you know, go to throw it out there, get, get our best foot forward. And, yeah. you know, I don't know, uh, you know, and I don't know if this is me, like, because of, I don't know if it's stupidity or ego or both, but like before I did YouTube, I would look at a video and be like, oh my God, I could do that. Like, uh, yeah. I would, that'd be so easy, you know? And then fast forward to doing it. I don't know if you saw my last video um, where I, I uh, tipped the driver. Tipped yeah, the driver. yeah. And I probably would have cut it out, but I honestly kept it in there thinking of you. Um, but like, I made a joke. I'm like, I'm still getting it. And I, I made a joke in my last one. And I, you know, I'm trying to be, I think my audience can tell. I, I there was one comment specifically. It's like Ed always gets so awkward when he tries to do something nice, and it is awkward. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though it's nice, like we talk about, it, like I know I'm doing something that this driver is going to like because as an Uber driver, yeah. as somebody who knows how much he's making, because I'm making the same thing. If I were to get this tip, it would be amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, but even still, I'm like, you know, there's like, be I feel obnoxious with the camera and. You're just thinking about so much. In my last video, I like I made a joke. Um, I kept it in there. I, I was I almost cut it, but I was like, if Zach sees this, he'll appreciate it. <laughs> if nobody else does, but I'm like, give me a break. I'm playing director. I'm playing cameraman. I'm the on-air talent, and I'm my own hype man. That's what I kept in there. <laughs> and like, it's something we talked about. Where like, if I had a camera person there, not only am I not holding the camera, but like just knowing that somebody else is there like rooting for you yeah. and knowing what you're doing as opposed to like being out there by yourself it's like i don't know it's, it's it makes a, such a difference you know yeah yeah exactly that's so accurate i was able to film the well technically be the first video on that uh Zakota channel like i filmed that with my brother and i just it was a little awkward you know because it's the first time i'd ever done it but it made it so much easier just having another human being who's you know on your side who's you know knows what you're doing just having that presence even if they're not you know yeah, you know, way to go, you know, cheering you on. Just having someone who's just there, you know, film and one makes, you know, clears your mind. You're not focused on filming. You know that that's being taken care of, but just having that presence of mind. Yeah. Someone else there that's doing it with you rather than just you going out with the camera. You yeah. know, here you go, here's yeah. your money, you know, like, uh, just it, it makes a world of difference. It makes me think. I've never thought of this comparison until right now, and I feel like it's a perfect analogy. Me and uh, my cousin would always joke, like, uh, you know, you go out, you're out at a bar or wherever, and you're like, um, you like, you make a fool out of yourself in front of a girl, like trying to pick up a girl or hit on a girl or whatever. And it's like, you know, the girl's probably going to shoot you down, at least in our situation, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, and you know, you're, you're, there's a part of you're doing it to kind of make your friends laugh, you know? And it's like, if you're out there doing that and your friends aren't there, you're just, either a creep or an a-hole, you know, yeah, or a, a douchebag, whatever it is. But it's like, when you're doing it, when you're making a fool out of yourself in front of your friends, it's like, you're, your friends have your back. You know they're yeah, enjoying it, you exactly. know? Exactly. And it's like, when you have a friend there, or even an employee there filming, it's like, hey, at least my employee knows that I have a legitimate purpose. Yeah. And I deal with this. Yeah. As opposed to this random person who's like, and rightfully so. Every time I've done it, they're like, I don't want this going anywhere. And then after the fact, yeah. they're like happy to do it. But like, originally, this person has no idea what my intentions yeah. are. And rightfully so. You know, I would be this day and age, I, you know, obviously doing what I do. I'm like, I don't really care. But yeah. um, I totally understand why someone's always like, I don't want this going anywhere because they don't know what I'm yeah. going to do with it, you know? Um, so yeah, just having that person there is, is a game changer, man. Yeah, yeah. no, exactly. Um, and I think in one of your videos you were like, uh, I think at the end you were mentioning or thinking about mentioning like one of the, one of the point of your videos is to yeah. find a cameraman. Yes, you know, yeah. like it's it's such a it's a tough thing. You know, I, yeah. I feel like there should be like a um, 
almost like a Fiverr for like content creators, yeah. you know, like, or like an Uber for content creators. Like, hey, I'm going out in Philly looking for a cameraman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If I was into designing apps, that yeah, would be an idea, yeah. but uh, that's not my thing. <laughs> there was some I want to try, I can't remember. I think it was like called Upwork, I think is what it was, mm. but I tried that and yeah, that didn't get any response. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. I wonder if part of that is being in South Dakota, like yeah. just the lack of people. Yeah, know? yeah, that's what. What did you say, 200,000 in your whole area? Yeah, that's about the, for the city, city gotcha, wise. Gotcha. Close, close to a quarter of a, a million. Metro-wise, but... That's not too bad. Yeah, it could be smaller. <laughs> but, again, like, we talked about this before, too, like, um, the, you know, the, the amount of interest in film in South Dakota... Yeah. ...versus the amount of interest in California, yes. you know? So it's like, or the amount, you know, we, we drove through Philly, you saw, like, literally it's called the Avenue of the Arts, and there's yeah. the University of the Arts, and, you know, the, the amount of, you know, I, I don't know if... If South Dakota has an art school, even you know what I mean, yes, like it yeah. might, but it's not as big as you are. So yeah. I can assure you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so what are your goals with this channel? Like what? This is Dakota. There's I, a lot of them are more just like personal stuff, and I'm always I kind of want to almost put them on the about page just to I don't know, kind of help build the following, you know, get people a little more attached, and you know, kind of make them goals that we achieve together, like. Sometimes I feel like they're kind of, you know, egotistical, but, like, one I love is, like, have a local news outlet there, you know, pick up on it. Because there's every once in a while you hear about, like, a story of, like, some, you know, there was a gentleman who has, like, a Twitter page. He kind of just makes posts about, you know, living in Sioux Falls, living in the Midwest, you know, living in this, uh, you know, kind of rural area. And so then uh, I think one of the local papers did a whole article on him. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know, and, like, I think he had around, like, 16,000 followers, something like that, you uh -huh. know. So, you know. Decent, decent amount, but nothing like, yeah. you know, millions, you know, right, right, right. super, like, super hard to achieve. So something like that, that's like one of my early goals. Like, I'd love to just, you know, I don't know, have that to happen. I think that'd be kind of cool. Just a little like, bit of... Like, naturally? Yeah, like, oh, just to gotcha. uh, get, like, an email from someone from, you know, Kellyland's one of the big local news outlets gotcha, there. Gotcha, gotcha. So, like, they heard about some sort of thing you put on. Yeah. And wants to follow. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, okay, exactly gotcha, that. Gotcha. Just because it sounds a little egotistical and, like, you know, that, it's like I always hate, you know, search for that validation but i do always kind of want it yeah <laughs> you know well not to rain on that validation but as a communications major like 99 percent of news is manufactured yeah. so like you know it could happen that they randomly come across it but i like i guarantee you that the fact that the the matter of you getting onto the local news is just a matter of a local news person looking on YouTube and seeing you. Because, gotcha, like, yeah. if you put out a press release, like, that is such a layup for a local yeah. news to do that. And, like, I read a book, um, I think Ryan Hall Holiday wrote it, who's, like, he's a pretty big, like, he's got a lot of content out there now. But it's, um, it's, like, confessions of a media manipulator or something like that mm. you ever hear that book no but he basically talked about how easy it is to just manipulate the news mm. like and his whole career was spent like manufacturing news for companies okay. and like getting people out there and um oh, yeah, that's so, really interesting not to rain on that parade, yeah, yeah. But, like, <laughs> honestly like i feel inclined once you put videos out just to email the local news and be like It'd be something that's like, I can't believe this Zakota guy put me on there without permission. This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and then they reach out to you and you'd be like, I don't know what he's talking about. I never even heard of yeah. this guy. <laughs> but now they start a story and they're going to finish it. Yeah, yeah. They have this little guy. Like the news is just so, I don't want to say easy to manipulate, but like you just, it's easy to manipulate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I might have a few contexts at one. I actually. Uh, my first job was working at uh, one of the news stations as a production assistant. So, and honestly, so, that's yeah. another thing about the news. Like, it's who you know, what you know. So yep. you know, so I'm like, hey, I'm doing this. You know, like that happened with uh, me and Jimmy um, when he started his clothing brand. We knew a guy at a TV station that we like used to hang out with. He's like, hey, come on up, we'll get you on. <laughs> you know, like, and we drove up to the we drove like two hours away and we got on like their morning show. And it's like, just because we knew the guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it had nothing to do with that area other than he's like, hey, I like you guys. Come on the show. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. So, not to rain on that yeah, goal, yeah, but... but uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, and like one, there's, uh, 
one ones I think it's try like try to make them realistic, you know, achievable. But one that I hope can can happen is I'd love to do like uh, I spent a hundred hours inside Mount Rushmore or something. There's you a can whole go in Mount Rushmore. There's a I'm pretty sure there's like a room behind it. There's like I've seen some videos where basically you go behind it and there's like actually an opening like behind the faces. Oh no! And way. then there's like a little doorway. I haven't Whoa. seen. Whoa! Yeah, I haven't. I didn't want to watch any of the videos. I thought that was just in Richie Rich. No. Uh, movie? <laughs> no. Uh, I don't. Not that one. Oh, you gotta watch Richie Rich. Rich. Uh, Mount Rushmore appear in it. Uh, yeah. That's oh, okay, where they. That's go. where they uh, stash their gold. Oh. It's either that or blank check. I mix them. No, it's Richie Rich. Yeah, it's Richie Rich. Well, if I, I spend oh, the 100... climax of the movie is at Mount Rushmore. Oh, okay. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'll check that out now. But yeah, yeah. If I spend a hundred hours in there, maybe I can like, yeah, see yeah, if there's right, any right. gold. <laughs> but thought you know, like, something like that. I'm like, yeah, let's just. T- Team up with the South Dakota Board of Tourism. You know, let's make this awesome video. We can promote, you know, touring the Black Hills and stuff. You know, so kind of feel like if you're if you got the right following, you know, you, yeah, I feel like you can maybe work your way into that yeah. somehow. So I thought that'd be a cool video to do, a cool local thing. That's that, you cool. Know, so that's awesome. Certain things like that are kind of like some like my goals, other than yeah. just you know, kind of to get stuff out there. You know, get a decent yeah. enough following that like, hey, we can hire in people, you know, to help you know yeah. make these videos and and whatnot. So. I think with starting a new thing, I think as long as you're enjoying enjoying doing it, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I'm excited to see them because I know the kind of quality you make. Um, but I'm and I'm interested to see too. Cause I think for the same things you're saying, like, you know, sh- damn if I know what how YouTube works, you know, like <laughs> I, I like you're saying you like you still haven't figured it out. I look at my own channel sometimes. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, like I, I think the most frustrating thing for me is like when i think something's gonna work mm-hmm. and then it doesn't and i'm yeah. like and i know you talked about like the switch being on and switch being off yeah. and it's like i don't know i don't know so, yeah i have the same thing like certain things I'm like oh man this is gonna work so yeah you know, great and like i wonder if it's i kind of thought about like because i have those videos where i'm like this one's gonna work so great uh, it has everything oh uh, you know didn't meet my expectations it kind of performed then a video I'll just kind of throw up there willy nilly, like, oh wow, that one did way awesome. Yeah, I wonder if it's just the expectations like you're expecting a million views on this one, yeah. and you know, it gets you know 300,000, you know, yeah, or and then you know, like the one that you just kind of throw up, you're going, no, 100,000, you know, that'd be great, and then you know, just double to that. It's like, oh right. wow, it way over exceeded, you know, that so. is true. Because some of these videos where I thought they could have done better, I look back and it's like, oh, this is still one out of ten from my last yeah. 10, you know, so uh, that's a good that's a good point, yeah. But yeah, it is like it's so that's like it kills your like morale a little bit when it's like yeah. you upload a video, you put all this time in, and then oh, it's you know, number eight in the top ten, yeah. you know? It's like, yeah, oh, bro. The other thing that frustrates me is like a lot of my videos, my biggest videos, have always blown up like months after mm-hmm. their upload, yeah. So I'm like, are, are these good because the, the analytics of the video are good yeah. honestly i think it all it really comes down to and i think this is my biggest beef with youtube and it's it's something i've talked about before and i know it but like so much of youtube is getting people to click you yeah. know and like i think for you especially as a new challenge or a new channel that's going to be tough yeah. you know because like why click this new zakoda when i can click all these other videos that i already know Fortunately, you do have the skill set and you do have, you know, you know how to make a good thumbnail and you are making great titles. Like, I know the title of these ideas. But, um, but yeah, it's like when I when I can get people to click the video, they watch it. Yeah. You know, I just like, I, they just can't click the video. Yeah. You know? I was like, oh, <laughs> just click the video. Like, you people know you're going to wa- like it when you click it. Just yeah, click it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that was something too, like, for the longest time. Like, now it's so engraved in my head, but I remember, like, thumbnails and stuff like that it took me a while to really figure out like oh yeah like your thumbnail is actually like, super important and your title is actually super yeah. important like i think more important than the video yeah really it's like it, it seems like it's almost uh not confirmation bias but like you know it's the way people are like if people click a video they want it to be good yeah you know like they don't want to think that they click the bad video and immediately click away so like if you can get them to click I think they're more likely to stick around with a mediocre video. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Can't get them to click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like when you talked about too about sacrificing the art. Like, I think that's a perfect reason. Like, why? Like, in a way, you have to make those sacrifices just because, you know, YouTube wise, just like 
I like to think that any idea, for the most part, can work. It just depends on how you package it, but yeah. as you package it in a certain way, you know, certain, like, I'll see certain videos, you know, channels doing certain videos, like, and it's just like, I know that there's only going to be, part of it is just there's only such a big audience for this specific topic, but yeah. sometimes it's also just the way that they're presenting their videos, like, this is only going to reach so far, because, you know, it's just, the title's not, you know, enticing, the, the thumbnails and that enticing, like, the only people who watch this are, you know, people who already are subscribed, you know, already know the value, but, like, new people will, you know, right. have no idea what this, you know, is about just you're gonna be able you're gonna see it keep scrolling they're probably not even gonna notice it's there you know right so that uh that makes me think of how like something i look at a lot is like videos and channels other videos and channels my audience watches and uh you know it's something i know about my own channel too but like a lot of these other channels are like you know just like uh, conflict is every people love conflict yes, you know yeah. and so like I know the best videos are going to be these conflicts in the Uber and like I, you know, it, it's hard for me to constantly put out that negativity yeah. and constantly relive it. And like, I mean, I, you know, one of my best videos, uh, oh, this is another issue that, um, you know, you run into before a different reason how my videos get demonetized and my yeah. videos get copyrighted. But like a lot of my videos end up getting demonetized and I'm like, well, I like having them up there because, you know, it's something I stand behind and I, I, I like to put things out that I think are doing good, but mm -hmm. like, I don't like having a video up where I'm I'm getting punked by four dudes and I look like a total you know yeah, punk. Yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I don't like that. I think it's good in the long run. There's so many people that comment on that video, like, oh, um, I thought about driving Uber, but seeing that I might be in this situation, I'm definitely gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's good because I think that you need to be a certain type of person to handle those situations. I don't like showing you know, getting, you know, yeah. punked like that. But like, um, where was I? My, my, my point was like, or my question where I'm going with this is yeah. like, when you're making your videos, like, do you, do you ever fall into a trap of like, um, not liking what you're putting out or like, you know, second guessing it or like thinking what's the point. And I know specifically, um, you know, we talked about recently how like, you know, there's so, and I, this is something I think I lose or forget about. Like, there's so much value in escapism. Yes. You know, yeah. and I think that's something that's really cool about, you know, really cool about your multiple channels. Because I swear, <laughs> every time I talk to you, you have, oh, yeah, I actually have a channel about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you ever think that there's, like, too much escapism? Or maybe with your new Zakoda channel where you're bringing in, like, real-life situations you're trying to apply, like, you know, uh, you know, give so-and-so money or mm -hmm. something. Like, how, do, do you ever, like, think about that balance? Or is it just like, hey, man, my tap-out corner, this is pure escapism. We're out, yeah. you know? But then at the same time, you have, like, actual stories about injuries, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, so, like, I don't know. What's your thought process on, like, the value of entertainment, so to speak? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like with the... Uh... A tap out corner, like I just kind of look at you know, escapism, entertainment, just something you know, not videos aren't going to be super life changing or you know, could oppose like really good ideas. Cause I feel like wrestling can do that, but I feel also feel like wrestling sort of just kind of gives into like what do the people want, you know, right. like it's just I want to see people beat up, I want to see people jumping off 20 foot ladders, you know, and it's kind of just you know, giving into like what you want to see and not necessarily really trying to like push you know push you to think you know about things a certain way or you right. know try to show show a certain light like it can be there is that in wrestling there's that kind of deeper edge but i feel like wrestling in general is very just you know entertainment focused you know there is art to it but i feel like it's entertainment first you know art is kind of mm -hmm. kind of second you know has its place but not you know there's plenty of wrestling yeah. shows wrestlers who it's just entertainment so that's kind of the way i look at it with the yeah. uh, tap out corner but there is a little bit of like that's that um uh, morale side like i think you know with like showing like injuries or you know certain things that, like i like for lack of a better term bad things that happen to me yeah. something unethical you know and like i do kind of think about like how do you like what's the way how do you paint this Cause i'm always very like i kind of just prefer let the people decide you know because if something is really bad but like it should just be let's just see it and be like oh yeah that is awful like you shouldn't have to like this is bad, you know, you should think this is bad. If it's, you right, know, right, something right. awful that happened, then, like, you know, for the most part, I don't necessarily, like, have that, like, agenda of trying to, you know, this person's the bad guy, I hate this person because they right. did this, you know. 
Which, yeah, isn't the best for storytelling-wise, but... Uh, it's more like, this is what happened. Yeah. This is it. Yeah, this know? is yeah. just the, the story. Yeah. And so, and also just to kind of avoid any drama with right. uh, the thing. So, but for Tap Out Corner, mainly just... I try to focus mostly on the escapism. The more, I guess, the bigger thing, as, like, uh, the more, like, morale side of that, uh, kind of what we're talking about, is, like... It's not it's not a huge like conflict, but it's kind of like with like top tens like, you know, are we making like an actual honest like top ten or are we making a YouTube video, you know? And with that like, there's certain like I did a video on that's not right yeah, exactly yeah I did like the top ten scariest uh, female WWE wrestlers and like there was some like oh yeah this one's probably like scarier but like like those characters are a little more freaky but like this one maybe not quite as freaky but they look great in a thumbnail they'd be perfect in a thumbnail right. you know so like. Let's you know put let's put this one in and then, like how do we rank them? Cause like I should you know have something really interesting at the beginning to keep people watching, then you know kind of intersperse things. So right, I, I kind of see that and like I'm kind of curious with like other people who make that kind of top ten list content. Like I sure a lot just you know, it's their opinion. You know they just you know go with that and then the video comes out the way it does. But I feel like if you want to make the best YouTube video, you kind of have to, you know, with keep that in mind and like think you know. Yeah, maybe, you know, the scariest, you know, female wrestlers. Yeah, she, you know, there's this one character who's probably way freakier because she's a lot more real, like, real life. You know, she maybe doesn't wear, fr like, a freaky mask or face paint. But, you know, the freaky mask and face paint, like, that's going to work better on a thumbnail. And that's going to, you know, get more people want to watch the video because that's, you know, out there. And it's, you know, uh, you know, very interesting to look at. But, you know, the kind of plain, ordinary looking person maybe isn't quite as enticing to click on so right so yeah so there's some that's usually like with tap out core that's kind of the bigger thing i'd say yeah. like i kind of face is like i want to make a really good video but then that kind of means that to you know maybe not be the most like pure unbiased you know top right. 10 or you know ranking or whatever and i think with that you know you know it's going to be subjective yeah. to the the narrator but i think that also speaks to how like information is conveyed because I'm like pure information. Like I'm doing a video right now on how much, uh, like how much I earn working Uber part time, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's like this thing that happened that I could explain it, but it's very convoluted. It would take like two minutes, which yeah. is an eternity in YouTube time. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe I just cut that out. I'll make it a separate video if people are interested. Um, and I'm like. You know, it's kind of like, well, they're still getting the full picture, but they're not getting the whole picture. And then that makes you think about everything, you know, yeah. like on the news, like with everything. Like you're never getting all the information. You're getting it through the lens of the presenter and the presenter, especially on YouTube. But no matter what the platform is forced to play to the platform, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So you're like, you're always getting this like twisted, you know, optimized presentation of information you know it's yeah. kind of like i don't know makes yeah. you wonder about i i thought the same thing with like working on these videos like with the tap out core and just you know, making videos in general like i kind of some stuff i'll like i'll do with my videos I'm like i kind of wonder like i feel like this is something that like you'd see like in the like could happen in news like the way you frame certain things what you choose to include what you choose not to include you know and sometimes you know it's not always malicious you know but like you know, sometimes just news you only have so much time like one to produce a story and i learned that with the working in local news there's only so much time before you have to have the story ready right and right. then only so much time to tell the story and it's like what information do i prioritize you know and then two you know you think about it from the business sense like well you know if we have a kind of a clear bad guy and a clear good guy that's a lot more of an interesting story you know that's a lot more you know it gets uh, a lot more attention than yeah you know being a little more you know unbiased you know and like so that and like, uh, so yeah, especially too here with, you know, news, I think there's a little bit of that balance between like church and state, I think is what it's called with, you know, the business end and then the news end to kind of mix the two. So they're not, you know, overlap. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but, yeah. uh, you know, with me doing everything on, you know, the tap of corner wise, you know, obviously it's a lot, you know, it's not quite as, you know, <laughs> in, uh, impactful as the news, but, you know, again, it's that, uh, you know, kind of trying to balance between like giving honest, you know, fair rankings, you know, and, uh, honest opinions versus, you know what's going to make a really good video and, right. you know, so those two sides of being fair and balanced and honest and, you know, making a great video that people are going to want to watch all the way to the end, you know, they kind of fight, fight each right. other sometimes. So I think going into Zakoda, like something that's always struck me about Mr. Beast is like, I mean, that guy is just 
pure YouTube yeah. passion, you know? He is a beast. <laughs> yeah, right. And, like, what, you know, I, sometimes I watch his videos and I'm like, you know, you see this person have the potential to win life-changing yeah. money and then they don't get it and Mr. Beast just like, yeah, nope, sorry, you know? Yeah. It's just like, and, of course, he's not, he's not like, responsible yeah. by any means it's his money like i'm not saying that but like it is just like for him it's video first and it's like you know and sometimes i'm like watching i'm like man like i, I really want this guy to win like give him a second shot you know yes. like maybe you want maybe sometimes like on the uh you know off camera like for instance i don't know if you remember his video um like uh hit this shot make a million dollars yeah yeah everyone it was it was like you can't tell me that the last shot was actually the one. That you, I don't know if yeah. you remember that. Like, I'm sure they at least edited it around. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, you know, some of those things, like, man, give the guy a second shot. Yeah. You know, like, you're going to change his life. <laughs> That's, like, you would think in some of these videos for Sakota, like, um, it's, again, that fight between what's going to be a good video and what's going to be, like, you know, I don't know, that morale, for lack of a better term. Like, you know, I talked about it, one video I really want to do is where, you or you have a delivery driver that come to bring your food. You give them. You make. I want to make the offer of. You know, I'll give you a thousand dollars cash, or you can pick one of these five mystery boxes. You know, and like, the part of me is like, well, I should just have it. Like, all be like really good stuff in the mystery boxes. Like, it's all like same value if or even more. But what I know would probably make a better video is if you mix like bad things like a rock in there. Right. Like that's gonna be make for a better video. But I'd hate to like you know someone be like. I'm going to go with the mystery box. You know, it's great for me because, like, I want someone to pick the mystery box. It's hard right. to turn down $1,000. And it's great for the audience. Yeah. You know, it's and, like, oh, yeah. But then, like. For that person, it's like, oh, I could have had $1,000 in cash, but I went to the mystery box and I got a right. rock. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh. I, I want to do that video so bad, but I'm like. Oh. And it's such a weird thing, too. And, like, going back to Mr. Beast, like, I'm not, you know. Yeah, yeah. Saying he's doing anything wrong. Like, it's such a weird thing because you're concocting this decision for him like it's your thousand dollars you yeah. know what I mean? like you don't owe him the thousand dollars but then it's like oh man you for whatever reason you almost feel wrong even though you were offering him a thousand dollars that he wouldn't have otherwise yeah. you know what i mean I, and it's like and he's you know not that he would keep the rock but he's walking away with a rock that he wouldn't have otherwise like exactly. he's coming out <laughs> with something extra it's just that his extra wasn't the thousand dollars that you offered in the first place that you had no responsibility to offer. So it's just like, man, it, it, it it's a it's a tricky it's a tricky world this yeah. YouTube world. <laughs> Anything like um video we just filmed two days ago at the time of this recording, uh went offered my brother ten thousand dollars to quit his job at Starbucks and then, you know, come help me make videos and it's you know, I kinda knew he'd probably say no and I was gonna turn into a whole other video and like Part of me afterwards though was feeling bad because like I ended up giving uh, him a thousand, then the other two people are working there a thousand dollars, and then you know, the other remaining will be used later in the video. But like after thinking about it afterwards, I was like super excited because it all went well and everyone was super happy. But I was also like, I don't know, for some reason it felt like kind of bad. Like okay, he could have had ten thousand dollars, like like you know, it'd be huge for his like tuition and stuff. And like I don't know, there's just like that part of me. It's like even when it went great like that, no one was like you know mad. Everyone ended up going happy. Like just the whole. You you know enter that position. It's not like you know I don't feel like I owed him or anything, but like I don't know. It's just that weird like feeling. You know, it's hard to describe, but just as that part of me that was like, oh, I kind of oh, yeah. feel bad for like you know putting him in that position. You know, saying, well, you have to quit your job right now. Like, oh, I can't. You know, and then yeah, you know, thinking like, oh, I could have had ten thousand dollars if I just would have you know thrown down this apron. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, so I'm like, or I like I think about not to add to your guilt, but like <laughs> think about the. You said you gave two of the workers a thousand dollars. You know, imagine if one of those workers switched shifts. You know, or think about yeah. the worker the next day, or the worker that comes in at nine o'clock that hears about, oh, I got a thousand dollar tip. It's like, <laughs> man, why did I take the nine o'clock shift yeah. today? You know, like, <laughs> exactly. Um, like, oh. I remember, I think she was a psychologist, and she said, I thought about doing this in the Uber. I still might do it. Hmm. Um, but she she did this. Um, exercise with her kids or experiment or whatever it is and and basically she would offer her kids two envelopes and say there's money in each of the envelopes mm. so you can take one and uh you have to keep it um and so she would give the envelope they take it and they pull it out and it'd be twenty dollars 
and she'd say, are you happy with what you got? And they say, well, let me see what's in the other envelope. And if it was a $5 bill, they'd be like, yeah, I'm happy I got yeah. 20. If it was a $100 bill, they'd be like, no, I'm pissed that I got 20. And obviously the lesson is like, well, regardless, it yeah. shouldn't matter. You should be happy that you got 20. Exactly. You, know? you shouldn't have to worry. You, you can't live your life comparing to what could have been. Exactly. Um, and I always think about that. I think that's, that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, when you're the one creating these situations, yeah. doing it for people, you, you can't help but feel bad. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's like, oh, it's yeah. time of that whole balance of like making the best video possible, but like, I don't know, just also like your morals or you're just, you know, wanting to like also do what's best for like the other people involved, you know, it's like right. those two things, like they don't always fight each other, but they do from time right. to time fight, right. you know, they're two opposites. So it's yeah. like, ah. Uh, difficult to navigate yeah those. yeah <laughs> oh brother well, that's cool man i've I yeah. have, we've been oh it's about an hour now Aren't um you? Oh, it doesn't... i'm getting a little <laughs> hungry i don't know about you yeah, yeah i don't know if there's anything else is there any uh, hooks you want to cover or no i guess just uh you know, it's so cool like being here one you know because i've watched the podcast so being in the car with oh, that's right everyone else. that is i didn't even think about that i mean i guess um again it's a uh Sorry, the light turned me off. Um, yeah, there's not too many. First of all, I don't talk to many people. Something about YouTube, um, you know, we didn't really talk about this at all, but like we briefly mentioned it on our calls. It's like, you know, we're working by ourselves all the time. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lonely entrepreneurship is just a lonely and general no matter yeah. endeavor, no matter what you're doing. And so, like, it's not like I talk to a lot of people, but it is always cool talking to you and you being like oh yeah i have your podcast on in the background and stuff like that so that's pretty cool to hear and i didn't even think of the fact that, like yeah now you're in it and you're on yeah, it so yeah that's yeah. pretty cool i'm in the spot <laughs> i gotta ask as a youtube expert like what i'm trying to think what could i how do i title this cheese steaks with hmm. cheese steaks with tap out corner you know, I'll get some of the tap out corner audience there. I was thinking cheese steaks with a South Dakotan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the New Mexican. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right, right. Going through all the states. Right, right, right. I was thinking maybe do you want to do Dakota? Because I actually have something a surprise for you that I got, that I brought along, and oh, I was gonna no way. include it in the the video that I'm technically kind of filming right now. And right. maybe do a little cross promotion. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> cheese steaks with Dakota. Yeah, yeah. Sold. Awesome. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sound good. Well, we need to actually go get a cheese steak yeah. with Dakota. I was going to take you to Pika's, mm -hmm. which is my favorite pizza ever. Um, they do the sauce on top, uh, but che Pika's doesn't have cheese steaks. So I'm trying to think. You know, maybe we do Pika's tomorrow, um, or. We could go to, uh, I got to decide where I got to go. But I'm working with somebody. My favorite thing you said is, what's the only other cheese, what's the only cheese steak you've ever had? <laughs> the only cheese steak I ever had was from Subway. <laughs> <laughs> so no matter what I do, I'm sure I will do better than Subway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll have to think of something. But uh, dude, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Check out whatever you're interested in. This is another thing about Zach. <laughs> I swear, every call we have once a week, not every call, but almost every call. He's like, yeah, I actually have a YouTube channel. I started a YouTube channel. And, you know, they're not tap out corner. Most of the time he's posting three videos a week, sometimes more. And sure, these other channels might be once a month. There might be like a channel he had from back in the day that he doesn't post anymore. But this man, whatever your interests are, this man has a channel about it. I kid you not. I got you covered. <laughs> but tap out corner for your best wrestling content out there. I love Nightmare Fueled Entertainment. That's yeah. really cool. Um, was that separate from your Goosebumps channel or the same? The same. Same. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and did you release the video with the small book? I did, yes. Yeah. That was that, that was cool. So, uh, I mean, I, I, how would you describe your interest? Like you, yeah. You, uh -huh. So basically, I mean, you got wrestling, obviously. Wrestling, yeah. Video games, but like, you get like horror, like um, yeah. goose. I, you're just a well-rounded character, <laughs> man. You, you can't put a pin on this guy. Yeah, no. But just... uh, Nightmare Fooled Entertainment is very Goosebumps related, yeah. which again, I loved. Being in the 90s and, and uh, yeah, it's cool to revisit that. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think what other channels you have, but there's always something. But Dakota is what's up and coming. Yep. Check it out. And, uh, yeah, when you see the Say Yes video that's flooding your YouTube recommendations, just know 
that that is why he is here. What exactly. do you know? What you're going to title that, or do you not want to reveal it? Hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll hold off. We'll hold off. God but forbid. When you see it, you'll know it. All right, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Very cool. All right, well, let's go get ourselves a cheesesteak. Sounds Thanks good to for me. coming on, Zach. Absolutely. All right, let's ride. That was great, man. Awesome. I hope I, I didn't just, cut that short there. No, no, end. that was perfect. Was, yeah, I just I always feel. Stuff I talk about, I'm just like always, like my mind's always so like thinking like YouTube, YouTube, other people, like what's the audience going to want to hear I know, about? and that's yeah. what I, I was like, you know, we talked about YouTube a lot. I'm like, this is, I, there was a point where we were in it and I was like, I love this. Like, I don't know yeah. how much people are going to love it. Yeah, but whatever, absolutely. you know, I'm yeah. happy I got to talk to you. And, I mean, this was basically like our weekly call. Yeah, yeah. Recorded. <laughs> On the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in case you're wondering, this is our weekly call of yeah. recording. So thanks for tuning in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hope you learned something about YouTube if you're interested.